The mere fact of not having much money does not mean we have overcome greed. How do we identify our true feelings? Just consider the prospect of having millions of dollars and imagine how you would feel. How do you feel when you think about coming into large sums of money overnight? Do you usually envy lottery winners or people who just suddenly got lucky with money? When you look at stacks of large bills, how does it make you feel? If you feel indifferent, then you have victory over money. If you failed the test, maybe you should think twice about asking God for big money. Thankfully, He loves us too much to entrust us with large amounts of it before we are ready. God does not want us to suffer, and therefore He does not bring money our way unless and until we are ready for it. If God is to trust us with wealth, we must get rid of all the passion and excitement we hide in our hearts for money. That is the source of true financial victory, not the money itself. As for me, I learned to live my life in a way that money does not rule over me. That is why in the time of need, money always comes to me. My thoughts are not about money, and I am constantly aware that I have authority over it. Some people will not even leave their house without money. This seems to be a bigger problem among men than women. Some men do not even tell their wives how much money they make because they do not want it taken away from them. In most families, the biggest conflicts are over money because it has great meaning and a disproportionate place in their lives. Often people lose control when they start making big money. Wives cannot recognize their husbands anymore because these husbands were not set free from the love of money before it became theirs. No millionaire I know carries money around. Why should they? Money for them is just an exercise in numbers. They are worth millions but often do not even carry a wallet. This is because these people are free from the power of money. On the other hand, people who have nothing often try to show off by carrying big, fat wallets around, counting their money in full public glare, because mammon has enslaved them. We have to learn to have the right attitude before God entrusts us with money. For this, we need to realize that money is just a means, not an end. It is a tool and resource in the same way a hammer, nail, or screwdriver is a tool required for a specific task. Just as we use a car as a means of transportation, so too money is used as a means of solving certain problems. If it means more to us than that, it will become our master. We are not supposed to treat money like a miracle that comes by itself. We earn it, but it is disruptive in the wrong hands. The fact that there are lotteries all over America with million-dollar jackpots does not negate the principle that money was meant to be earned. Many examples can be found of people who win large sums of money, only to return to their old, often penniless lifestyles within a short number of years. Some who are homeless return to homelessness, just as homemakers became homemakers again. This is because they came into money when they were not ready for it and they never learn that money must be under human control, not the other way around. It is a question of who the master is. Learn to master the laws and nature of money rather than expect it to come to you as a miracle. Wealth is not a miracle, it must be either earned or created. Many Christians, especially in developing countries, are sitting in churches expecting God to bless them with money, instead of learning the principles of wealth creation. That is a great pity. These Christians are no better than someone playing the lottery, because either is attempting to create or earn their wealth they just want to win it. We need to work to make money and be ready for it when it comes. Most people are capable of making a lot of money, but not everyone has the skills to retain it. It is not how much you make but rather how much you keep. This is a secret to financial success. Money that comes easily is like snow that falls on our heads and melts just as quickly. People who are expecting money through a miracle, and those who play the lottery, fall into this category. We read in Ecclesiastes 10 verse 19, A feast is made for laughter, and wine makes life merry, but money is the answer for everything. I learned one extremely important truth when I learned that people who are not free regarding money are not free at all. There are two kinds of financial freedom one may decide either to live without money altogether, which seems almost impossible in our modern world, 
or to possess and control so much money they are free to spend any amount needed or desired. Most people will never experience this kind of freedom. 95% of the world, which means the vast majority of Earth's inhabitants, is utterly dependent on money. It controls and directs their lives. The lack of it limits their desires and visions. It dictates their lifestyle and controls their actions. It tells them what they can eat, what they can wear, where they live, and where they go. Largely, money or lack of it is the proprietor of their lives. It is tragic when a person does not have a place to live, when people go hungry, or when a church does not have a building to gather in for worship. It should not be that way. Money should not stop us, nor should it limit us or become an obstacle to us in any way. Money should not determine what we can and cannot afford. We must rule money and not allow it to rule us, because God predetermined we would have authority over all things, including money. I hope I've been able to convince you in this chapter that money is not what makes you rich or happy. Like I've said earlier, what is worth spending your lives on attaining is righteousness and contentment, which is true wealth. Get this right. If you will do more work on yourself, your character, and on your inner man, then you will get to a place where you are absolutely content and satisfied with God's blessings in your life. If you will pursue righteousness, contentment, and integrity dedicating yourself to attaining these virtues you will discover it will be easier for you to rule over money. More so, God finds it easier to trust you with wealth and money because your heart is right.